Today we are comparing the Mavic 2 Pro with the Mavic 3 Classic. And yes, you might be wondering why are we doing this? The Mavic 2 Pro is an old drone. Yes, it is, but it is not dead just yet, as you will see from the video. We're going to give you comparative on photo and also comparative on the videos, but I want you to draw your own conclusions in here. So let's get to it. All right, let's get started with some of the specs. And yes, the Mavic 2 Pro was released in August of 2018, as opposed to this brand new one right here in November of 2022. The battery is pretty different. 31 minutes on the Mavic 2 Pro, 46 minutes on the uh, Mavic 3 Classic. As far as the weight, they're pretty much exactly the same, 905 versus 895. And then as far as the technology to send the signal back to the controller, that's where there's a big difference. O2, OQSync 2, as opposed to O2, 3 plus which is the the newest technology from dji maximum speeds are going to be the same 45 to 47 miles an hour and as far as the sensors yes the mavic 2 pro has more sensors because it has sensors on the side as well but this is designed in such a way that the back sensor is also a side sensor so you'll be getting the same type of obstacle avoidance which is in the front in the back on the top at the bottom and on each of the sides now as always with these drones we put them to the test especially when it comes to the flight time we got 68% of the advertised hover time of 29 minutes. So we got 21 minutes and 55 seconds for the Mavic 2 Pro. Granted, this was at an altitude of 8,009 feet. So you have to keep that in mind. We were at much higher elevation or equivalent elevation in this case. For the Mavic 3 Classic, we were able to get 83% of the advertised flight time of 40 minutes. So we got 33 minutes and 50 seconds. This was at 7,200 feet uh, elevation or equivalent elevation. We also put these to the test when it comes to the noise. The Mavic 2 Pro was a little bit quieter by 2 decibels, so 72 decibels for the Mavic 2 Pro and 74 decibels for the Mavic 3 Classic. When it comes to the sensors, that's where there is a big difference, although you'll see in a minute when I show you the different samples that, uh, well, the difference may not be that much. On the Mavic 2 Pro, there's a 1-inch sensor with a 20 megapixel uh, camera. On the Mavic 3 Classic, same 20 megapixels, but with a Micro Four Thirds CMOS sensor, all of these cameras can do JPEG and JPEG plus RAW. They all have a variable aperture of f2.8 to f11. And then as far as videos, the Mavic 2 Pro will do 4K at 30 frames per second, 2.7K at 60, and then 1080 at 120 frames per second. The Mavic 3 Classic has the option to do 5.1K at 50 frames per second. That's a big deal as well as 4K 60. And then we can also do 4K at 120 frames per second and 1080 at 200 frames per second. Big difference. Also a big difference in the bit rate. 100 on this side, 200 megabit per second on the other side. So by far the Mavic 3 Classic here on paper has the much better bit rate. And then as far as the color mode, you'll find the same on both of these with log 10 bit, HLG 10 bit, and then also the normal 8 bit uh, format if that's what you want to do. Talking about the different photo modes, we have burst mode on both of them. We can also do AEB. We cannot do any smart photos. That's something that you find actually on the smaller drones uh, with DJI. And then panoramic, we'll be able to do vertical, wide, 180, and then also the sphere panoramic. Uh, the Mavic 3 Classic also has the ability to do three time digital zoom. Here, there's no digital zoom because, well, this drone had a little, uh, little brother uh, or a little sister <laughs> with the Mavic 2 zoom, which had the ability to do actual zoom uh, directly into the lens without being digital. Now, you also have the ability to do master shots on both of them. We have quick shots, so you can do the drone, the rocket, the circle, the helix, uh, the boomerang, and then the asteroid. That's available on both platforms. And then there's a tracking mode on each side. Uh, we have the, the spotlight, active track, and point of interest on both of them. Although the Mavic 3 has the newer version, so spotlight 2.0 versus 1.0. We have active track 5.0 versus 2.0, and then the point of interest 3.0 versus 2.0. Intelligent flight modes on this drone, Surprisingly, on the older drones, we had the ability to do waypoints and also to do tap fly. This is something that has disappeared recently from all the DJI drones, and I'm not quite sure why, actually. Uh, you can also do hyperlapse. This one has a big advantage with the cruise control, where you can actually set a specific direction and then start to move the drone uh, around that direction, which is very useful. This is a, a new feature that a lot of people have been uh, enjoying quite a bit. Now, as far as pricing, the Mavic 2 Pro here 
is no longer available for sale directly on a DJI website. So you'll have to find it used from somebody else. But when it was still being sold, it was $14.99 for the drone using the uh, regular controller, the traditional controller, I'm gonna call it. The Mavic 3 Classic, at the same level using the, the RCN1 controller, which is the standard controller, is $15.99. So $14.99 versus $15.99. Now you could get an upgrade on this one using the DJI RC, which is this controller right here, uh, that would cost you $17.49. And then you could also buy the drone only for roughly the same price as you could buy this drone with the controller for $14.69. So um, I would say they're pretty comparable in price, about a $100 difference if you compare apples to apples. Now there's also a flight more combo that was available on the Mavic 2 Pro for $230. Now this flight more combo kit is a bit more expensive at $649, but I think it includes a bag and it includes quite a few more things in here. If you wanted a slightly less fancy version, you can get one for also $599. So uh, I'm gonna let you decide which one you wanna find. Uh, if you look online, actually, you can find that these drones uh, are still fairly expensive, even used. And the moment that everybody's waiting for, which is the picture comparison. I'm going to give you, well, uh, a bit of a comparison from an ISO perspective and also from a f-stop perspective, from an aperture perspective, because remember, these two have variable aperture. Uh, we have a chart that we use in the office that we use as a standard, and we put all of our drones through that chart. Uh, it, it has, it's a torture test for cameras because it has tiny little areas like the picture that you see right here, which is essentially just a zoomed in onto this big picture chart. So we pick the little details and we see how the cameras are doing. And here what you can see is that from between uh, ISO 100 all the way to ISO 6400 on the Mavic 2 Pro at F5. I had to pick uh, a very specific uh, aperture here. I pick F5 because that's typically in the middle of the range and it's typically a pretty good aperture that I like to use. F5, F5.6, F6.2. Uh, these are the apertures that uh, typically are going to give you the, the sharpest details. But you can see here, as we go through the ISO, as we increase, obviously, we're gonna lose some of the details. Now, I do want you to pay attention to that bottom line here, where we have the ISO 800 column. And you can see that in the details here, in the ISO 800, we see all of the squares. Why am I saying this? Because if I show you the next picture here, the next comparison, the Mavic 3 Classic did not do so well. And like I said, this is a torture test. This little area here is pretty tiny, but you'll notice is that on this portion, there is some artifacts at the bottom at ISO 800, and this is something that we did not see in the Mavic 2 Pro. You also notice that at ISO 6400, there's a lot less detail, actually a little bit more noise, even in the white, and uh, a little bit more artifacts. And we were actually surprised to see that a camera that is much larger at micro four third here on the sensor, as opposed to one inch sensor, was not performing nearly as well uh, on this chart. Now let's take a look at them on top of each other so you can see the same area being compared here uh, from one side to the next. And again, you can see that I think personally, the Mavic 2 Pro is actually performing uh, better in this case. Another portion here of the chart, you can see the Mavic 2 Pro here at F5.6, again, between ISO 100 all the way to ISO 6400. Now uh, you can tell obviously when we get to the magenta towards the end that uh, you can start to see some artifacts. I do love that portion of the chart because uh, uh, that magenta usually has a tendency to uh, deteriorate. And then you can see also even in the middle, uh, as we start to get to 800, 1600, you can start to see some artifacts that, uh, well, may not be uh, something that you wanna have. Now, when we switch to the Mavic 3 Classic, F5.6 as well, you can see, uh, I was telling my, uh, my my staff when we were looking at this, this looks like glitter. If you look at ISO 1600, I'm gonna define it as glitter because it is really not all that great, even at ISO 3200. Again, very surprised, not the results that we were expecting, uh, especially in comparison to the Mavic 2 Pro, which is a 2018 drone. This 2022 drone uh, doesn't seem like it's able to uh, keep up. And then here you can see them on top of each other, uh, the same exact area, uh, lit exactly the same way so that we had uh, perfect exposure. And yeah, you notice there's a, a big difference. Another area of torture test, you're gonna say, what is this thing? Well, these are supposed to be horizontal lines. You see the horizontal lines 
ones at the bottom, while the ones on the top are actually spaced a little bit less. And uh, and I'm not gonna lie, the majority of the drones have a very, very difficult time uh, rendering all of these lines, except for the Mini 3 Pro. This is the drone that has performed the best on that chart of all the drones that we've tested, but uh, the Mavic 2 Pro here is having a bit of a hard time, especially when we start to push the ISO, uh, the ISO 1600, 3200. Now you see a difference in color in some of these lines. That is not the way that it is in real life. Uh, the lines are spaced uh, equally, very tight together, and then they are also um, supposed to be of the same color with a white background. Not at all what we see here uh, being rendered. It is actually a lot worse when we move to the Mavic 3 Classic. Uh, you see these lines, uh, uh, chromatic aberration, uh, you have the, uh, the the blue and then kind of a, a purple color in between those. And then at ISO 6400, I, I call it a shaggy carpet. It just does not look good at all. Now at ISO 1600, I do have to say, um, <laughs> well, you, you shouldn't be expecting a whole lot. This is a torture test, okay? This is a torture test on the lens, but it did not perform like the Mavic 2 Pro did. And here you can see them on top of each other. Um, yeah, not again, what we were expecting. Now let's take a look at the aperture instead of looking at just the ISO. So I pick ISO 200 because I think it's a good compromise. Uh, it's probably where the, the, the lens is gonna perform the best right around ISO 200. And then here you can see a spread between uh, f2.8, f3.5, 4, 5, 7.1, 9, and 11. And they are more, actually there's double that amount of apertures. Uh, we do test on every single one of them, but I didn't wanna clutter this chart. And as you can see here, here, as we go away from the extreme, so f2.8 and f11 are going to be a bit more blurry, especially f11, not a, a great way to take pictures. I don't recommend you go that high. But uh, if you keep it right around f4, uh, f6, f7, even f7.1 is somewhat acceptable. Now this is the Mavic 2 Pro right here at ISO 200. And then here's the Mavic 3 Classic at ISO 200 as well for the same exact apertures. And you can see also the kind of the same conclusion, quite frankly, right in the middle, you'll get the, the sharpest image when you get to the extreme that it's gonna be a pretty soft, especially at f11 and especially at f2.8. This is why you don't use lenses fully open or fully closed. And then lastly, I want to show you a video comparison. And then you'll see here on the left side, you have the Mavic 2 Pro. On the right side, you have the Mavic 3 Classic. Now you can see all the specs that I used. I tried to keep the exposure right around uh, plus 1.7 as far as the uh, EV, uh, the exposure compensation. And the reason I do this is because this was shot in log, uh, both of these on both sides. Now you can see that the Mavic 3 Classic is a little bit uh, paler, uh, a little bit uh, harder to read, a bit more contrast in the Mavic 2 Pro. Now, when we go and we add a lot, uh, I downloaded the actual lot from the DJI website. There are two different lots. Uh, the one that you see on the Mavic 2 Pro is going to be the lot uh, that also goes with the Air 2S. The Mavic 3 Classic has two lots. It has a vivid version, which is the one that's applied here. And then it also has a regular version, uh, which I haven't applied because it's a bit more pale. Now, I find that the difference here between the two after you apply the lot is almost uh, minimal. It, it's very hard to see a difference between the two footage. And also what I did for you here is I zoomed in at 400X, so four times zoomed in. And this is where I think you see the Mavic 3 Classic finally shining. I think there's a, more, a lot more detail being kept at 4X, possibly from the size of the sensor, I think, uh, even though we have the same 20 megapixel, but I think it's pretty clear that the Mavic 3, in this case, in video mode, is a winner over the Mavic 2 Pro. So I'm gonna let you make your own decision. I'm, I'm giving you the data here because uh, I want you to figure out, uh, well, you, you pick whatever you prefer. I don't think there is a, a right or wrong answer. It depends on your budget. It depends on what you currently own. But all I wanna say is that I don't think the Mavic 2 Pro is dead just yet. Uh, if you wanted to think about the best settings for these two drones, if you have a Mavic 2 Pro or plan on buying one, uh, I would keep the maximum ISO uh, to 800. I wouldn't go over 800. Uh, in a pinch, I would probably go to 1600, possibly, but then you would, I think, start to see uh, quite a bit of loss of quality. As far as this one, 
I hate to say it, but I wouldn't go over 400. Uh, 800 in a pinch, maybe, but really 400 max. So 800 max, 400 max in this case. And then as far as the f-stop, I say uh, between 4 and 6.3 for your aperture. And then same thing on this side, between 4 and 6.3, it looks like this is where uh, the, the, the image is going to be the sharpest. That's it. That's all I have. Let us know what you think, and we'll see you for the next video. Thank you.